Hello and welcome to Cosmic Tickle. Today I will be talking about overwhelm and how to deal with overwhelm and everything that comes with it, all the stress, anxiety, not feeling in control of your life. My name is Gosha. I'm a mind-body educator, I'm an emotional science expert and a holistic coach teaching in this channel all things about how to create life on your terms, meaning create life on your, of your dreams without sacrificing your well-being in the process. So dealing with overwhelm is going to be such an important step to actually reach that life of your dreams. Because if you are dealing with overwhelm on a regular basis, the chances are that you are stressed, anxious, feeling out of control, that you might be even having some physical problems or mental health issues, and that everything feels like it's slipping through your fingers and that you're just barely going from one day to another and being constantly maybe exasperated about, you know, the stuff that is going on in your life and that you're barely managing the workload, your mental health and your relationships. So if that's you, you will get plenty of advice, plenty of value from listening to what I have to share because that was me in the past. And trust me, you can deal with this Trust me, you can shift this. And I mentioned that, you know, I talk a lot to sensitive women who have a vision, who maybe want to create or are creating life on their terms, such as perhaps running your own business or wanting to shift your passion into a business and all kinds of things that would not compromise the values that you want to embody in your life. So, this kind of women, this kind of people have a very vivid imagination. And talking about imagination is really important because we, as, as women with really strong imagination, maybe smart and intelligent, we, we have a tendency to worry a lot and we have a tendency to slip back into those patterns of like overthinking a lot about what there is to do, what we have to predict, and like really trying to control reality as much as possible. And I talk so much on this podcast, on this channel, about living in a flow and living in harmony with life rather than trying to control it because trying to control life and trying to predict everything in our life is leading to nothing more than anxiety and I know that this way of being has served you because it has served me as well for a large portion of life and it may seem like it's something that will help you in the future but you have already noticed that it really leads to burnout, overwhelm, stress, anxiety, and all kinds of things that are detrimental to your evolution at this point of your life. So what worked in the past won't get you to the next level. And this is one of my favorite sayings that you we should not settle to what has worked in the past. We need to keep shifting our gears. We need to keep shifting our ways of operating because we are growing and you won't create life on your terms of your dreams if you keep doing what you've been doing so far. So I just hinted something about imagination, right? This is a very important thing to take into consideration when we talk about overwhelm. And here I want to reframe or frame what do I mean when I talk about overwhelm in the first place. So I want to start it by just sharing a little story. It's going to be quite a short story, but many years ago when I was 
maybe I was starting to coach or something like that, I took a part in like an introduction to a group course and there was a topic of overwhelmment. And at this time I had dealt with overwhelming for a while and it was mostly because I was doing a lot of things. At the time I had like three jobs, I, was, I had a day job, I was running two businesses and there was a lot going on. And I heard this thing that the coach said that really opened my mind to change completely how I was seeing overwhelmment. And from then on, it was quite quickly moving for me to shift the overwhelmment from my life. And it really takes a new way of understanding for you to open up your mind as well and start shifting your overwhelmment. So the coach said that overwhelmment is not necessarily having a lot to do in your life, it's thinking a lot about having to do a lot of things in your life, right? And it could be in work or whatever responsibilities you are thinking you have. And even though there was no huge explanation to this, but creating that opening in my mind allowed me to see like, yeah, this is a perspective. This is me spinning my wheels, thinking a lot about all I all that I had to do, all that I was responsible for, all the to-do lists and all the ways I was seeing myself in this situation. So everything felt like it was really weighing on me because of the way I was thinking. So I can totally acknowledge if you have a lot of things on your to-do list. I did as well. And for the longest time, I, I had two businesses or at least one side business. And I had a day job for many, many years before I was able to just focus on one business. And I totally acknowledge if you're super busy, but... But there is always a but in these things because for us to challenge the ways we see ourselves and to resolve the issues that we have, we do need to challenge even the ways we seek excuses or we think that they are legit excuses or legit reasons for us not being able to resolve those issues. And even though you have a lot on your to-do list, even though you are super busy, even though you have your day filled up from the morning to the late in the night, and I totally get this, but overwhelmment comes from you putting these things on your list and overwhelmment comes from you deciding that these things are on your list and overwhelmment comes from you constantly thinking how much you have to do in the first place. This is the most important reason of all. You constantly thinking about how much I have left on my list, checking that list and constantly thinking like, oh my God, I still have so much more left. I don't know how I'm going to complete this and I'm gonna be left with more tasks for tomorrow and all the stories that keep happening. And trust me, I'm not mocking you right now. I did the same exact thing for so, so long. Overwhelming stress and anxiety, well, actually not acknowledged anxiety, drove me into a chronic illness. I was sick for so many years and I can treat this lightly right now while still having compassion for you. But I need to model the perspective that I have on what overwhelmment is. It's simply a habit of that constant fixation of how many things we have and allowing yourself to see your life, 
to see the potential of having a different way of perspective. Because this is possible no matter how busy you are, no matter how many tasks you have on your list, freedom from overwhelmment, peace, joy and harmony are completely accessible to you. So now about how it's possible because this is why you're listening to me right now. So first things first. Since overwhelmment is thinking a lot about what you have to do regardless of how much you have to do because I've seen women, I've seen people who are completely overwhelmed with just as much to do during the day as cook dinner, literally. They, they were obsessed, they were thinking about what to do, what to cook. And yes, people do have these kind of problems and I'm not diminishing any kinds of problems. Thinking a lot about what you have to do is the problem. So to start unwinding this problem, we have to start changing how we think, right? It makes perfect sense. So first, I would want to invite you that you actually observe what you think, what you tell to yourself throughout your day. And for me, raising awareness is one of the top things that will change your lives in all areas of your life. If you have your business, if you're busy at your corporate work, if you are, you know, doing a lot of things in your life, if you have a lot of responsibilities or whatever you do in your life, this can be changed by raising your level of awareness, slowing it down. Even if you're not slowing down in the pace of what you have to do, but slowing down what you think to yourself just so much to create space to observe what you tell to yourself when you say it. And great thing would be also to take a journal and write things down as you can during the day or put them in your phone if you don't have a journal, if it's not handy. Or, you know, in the evening, you can just jot down whatever you have observed during the day so that by the sheer observation, you will be able to shift. The beauty of our mind body is that we don't really have to control it so much as we think we do. So many people force themselves to create this really complex mantras, complex way of thinking and strategies on how they will behave and do all kinds of things, which some of them can be helpful because anticipating a certain behavior that is recurring is a very good way of preparing for these things. But when we start controlling our behaviors, an internal part in us starts resisting this control because there was a reason why we've developed a certain behavior. So in the case of overwhelmment, it's based on a worry, it's based on a fear that you won't complete what you have to do. And you have to constantly keep reminding yourself what there is left on your to-do list, right? Makes sense. But most people don't think about this. And as you can acknowledge that there are those different aspects of you that may live in a certain conflict, I want to bring back the, the subject of awareness. Because once you start being aware and you have an intention on how you want to live your life, meaning you want to feel more peaceful, more creative, more liberated from all that weight and the stress that comes with it, right? So when you have that intention, then all you have to do is to notice when it happens throughout the day. When you catch yourself thinking those thoughts, rushing yourself, reminding yourself, maybe telling you that, what if I don't do this? Or, you know, 
like creating all these narratives that create a stress and overwhelmment. As much as you can slow down your thinking and become curious of what these thoughts are, writing them down, you can become more acutely sort of sensitive to catching them. It's a very good thing to tell yourself almost out loud what you say to yourself and plant an intention in your mind to say, well, if I catch myself saying this, maybe punishing myself for not doing this task on time or rushing myself to do this faster or you know, pushing through the lunch break and all kinds of things that we do to try to speed it up or cram in more things during the day, then when you hear yourself say it, it will become easier to catch it when you think it. Okay, I know I'm getting very detailed, but I want you to get some good tools from this episode that you can implement, that will be practical and that will change your life because it changed my life, it changed all of my clients' life and there is no reason why you couldn't change your life as well. So now that you know how your thoughts sound, how your self-talk sounds like when you rush yourself, create all these kind of overwhelming inner talk dynamics when you push yourself to do certain things. Now that you are well prepared to tackle your day, right? So now if you go throughout your day, the most important thing is that you keep connected to yourself, keep connected to the present moment and feel embodied for a certain period of time. Treat this as an experiment that you only tackle the overwhelmment during your maybe week or a month or something like that and that you're just working with this subject as you do your normal you know, responsibilities that you would normally do. And if you can become a little bit more present, if you can become a little bit more embodied to observe how you feel when you feel changes in stress or anxiety or some sort of tension that keeps coming up, usually this is a very good sign to pay attention to your thoughts as well because, well, your body is responding to your thoughts, even those that you don't hear very distinctly, but your body is a perfect, it's a perfect signaling tool that gives you an idea to pay more attention to what's going on up here, up in your head. So paying attention to how your body feels is going to really help you layer and really get tight in that awareness exercise. And by combining these two things, you will most likely be able to catch yourself throughout the day and see when you're starting to spin your wheels, when you're getting into that fever again, when you're chasing your own tail or I'm out of, you know, metaphors right now, but you get my point. And as you notice that, all you have to do is just take a few deep breaths, okay? That will bring you deeper into your body and allow you to have a choice what to do with this. I speak so much about a choice because having a choice, having space to have a choice is by far the most empowering thing you can give to yourself in all of the life areas. When you have children, make a space before you say something. If you have a partner, make a space before you react. If you are at work working nine to five, nine to six, nine to eight, whatever, you know, make a space before you react in a certain situation. 
the same in your business the same in whatever you do with your friends and family oh my god especially with your family <laughs> right the parents and the uncles and all that so having space to make a choice is what gives you the access to your core self to your inner wisdom and to your intuition and by being embodied you can make a new choice you stop the momentum you stop the negative habits you stop the patterns of spinning the wheels you stop the patterns of reacting you stop the patterns of pushing yourself right because you create a new space and invite a new choice in. I created a free guide that you can download from, from every episode I put out that explains how to make that choice based on your core self, based on your highest self potential, so that it aligns to your highest good. It aligns with your well-being, it aligns with your joy, it aligns with your abundance, your love and your trust, okay? So if you haven't downloaded it just yet, make sure you do this. It will make your life easier. I still use this tool after 10 years from developing this and it changes life. So download it. It really costs nothing. There is no reason why it wouldn't work for you. So getting back to our system, getting back to our process. Now that you have your intention of how you prefer your life to be, meaning you prefer to feel free, you prefer to feel peaceful, right? You prefer to have, you know, enjoyment from your work and from your day, right? It's why you're listening to what I'm saying today, because you want to stop feeling overwhelmed. And this is perfectly, perfectly good place to start with an intention. Now that you know how to create awareness, right? And now that you have created space and know how to create, how to make these aligned choices, all you have to do is to allow the right choice to come to you. And when you've worked with this process, when you've settled in the moment, when you breathe into that space of choice, when you create that space and know that there is a core self, there is a higher self inside of you that knows how you could behave right now, I can guarantee you that over time, maybe even from the first time, you will start making better choices. You will start breaking the old patterns of overwhelm, stress, anxiety. And you can really observe this depending on the situations, depending on how aware you are and depending if you are really getting embodied in the present moment, you can cre really create that shift quite fast. I talk a lot about how the core self will save you in one of my latest episodes. So you can also watch or listen to it. It really explains how this inner wise part really fuels us, really feeds us. It's a constant spring of inspiration that is helping us evolve and grow into the best person that we can be and living the best life that we have the blueprint for right so you can also listen to that and also i talk about embodiment a lot in the latest episodes so i encourage you to watch any of them i talk about intuition and all these things that really helped me to become embodied so practicing different ways you can be, become more embodied by meditating, by exercising with awareness, by dancing with awareness, doing all kinds of things that involve your body and getting out of your head. So how to become embodied, how to get out of your head into your body, all this will help you gain access 
to your inner wisdom. Like the entire process of embodiment, growing awareness, getting in tune with your highest self, getting in tune with your intuition, with your wisdom and creating the highest emotions you can and creating the life that you can. These are really the steps in my embodied reintegration program. So if you want to work with me step by step, this is also what you can do. But if you still are a lot in your head and you want to DIY it, if you want to do it by yourself, you can also watch a couple of episodes. I talked about overthinking too much and how we, you know, give away our power. We have a lot of process now laid out for you, right? You need to become more embodied, get out of your head, get into your body, get more present, create awareness, all that based on your intention of how you want to live your life, being more peaceful, being and working more harmoniously, more aligned with how you want to live your life and making those aligned choices that step by step will compound to creating the life that you want. I can't emphasize this enough because we think like, oh yeah, choices based on higher self, blah, blah, blah. But we make like hundreds or, or thousands of choices throughout each day. If you are going on autopilot and if you are just rehashing your old behaviors, your old patterns, then don't be surprised if you are constantly living your life as nothing changed, right? Life is about evolution. It's about becoming a new version of ourselves every single day, growing into who we are meant to be. It's a journey. It's an adventure. And the most important tool to do it is your free will, is your choice. This is how we're different from other species. We can think and we have free will to act on the highest choices, to live the life how we want to live, to fulfill our dreams, to live on our terms authentically. And for this, you really need to master the way you are making your choices. So I hope it has been useful. I hope you have enough to get started. And again, if you need any support on this journey, just find my details in the description of this episode. I'm not far. And if after this episode you want to listen to something else, I encourage you to get back to one of my episodes talking about anxiety and how you can shift this as well, because, you know, overwhelm and anxiety come hand in hand, unfortunately, but this is a fact. So if you want to really get deeper, I encourage you to do that. And for now, thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. And I'll talk to you very soon.